All right, thanks for staying with us. October 13th is designated as International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction with a focus on encouraging a global culture of risk awareness and catastrophe uh, preparedness. Now, the day is an opportunity to acknowledge the progress being made towards preventing and reducing disaster risk and losses of life, uh, livelihood, economies and basic infrastructure in line with international agreements for reducing global disaster risk and losses. Uh, Sounds like a tongue twister. <laughs> well, <laughs> some no, things they say that they are inevitable, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, I believe that if we are very, very proactive in the approach of anything, even for the ones that are in inevitable, like disasters that natural, natural disasters, disasters that are yeah. inevitable, mm -hmm. if we are proactive, there is always because I mean There's nature. A way to reduce the loss of nature lives. has been really fair to us that in Nigeria, everywhere I'm talking about in the universe, mm -hmm. the universe has been fair enough to every human being that if you plan and you prepare, right, no matter how grave the disaster would be, it will mm -hmm. not be. To, the impact would not be as much, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm just saying this in line with what is happening in Lokoja State, for instance, with yeah, the, with the so dam the and all mm -hmm. of that, right? Uh, it's not like you did not know that certain things were going to be, what was, was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So why weren't the government proactive enough to at least avert the death that has happened, mm -hmm. the, the excessive losses that have happened, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. I just believe that, yes, they can be disaster, but we truly have the capacity to reduce, right, the risk that mm. it comes with. And let's just be proactive. With that proactivity, we can actually go far. That's what I feel. But hey, <laughs> that's the conversation for another day. So I was going to say, um, quickly before we go into our what's in the news, yesterday I had talked about the young man that was on life support mm. trying to battle for his life. And it's so sad. I mean, hearing that um, Rico, um, Rico, that's his name, uh, Big Brother, uh, former star. Oh, and you know what really broke my heart today, and I think mm. we're going to talk about it. I think Lady, you mentioned it as well, yeah. where people are filming, Recording. somebody is Recording. in the hospital. Mm. I mean, this brought me to many years when my yeah. sister, when when my sister was in intensive care. Mm. You know, I, I just could picture that if my sister was in this country, she would have been dead, buried, and gone by now. I mean, mm. there was no way she would have lived. Right. I don't understand, first of all, our approach to emergencies. Mm -hmm. I don't understand our approach to, you know, that this is a critical health condition. Right. Mm -hmm. So many needless death that mm -hmm. happens. Right. Somebody's in the hospital battling his life and all you think about doing is He's catching you know, you recording, recording. Talking, our heart goes standing. out to it. I mean, all his friends, especially the ones from the Big Brother house, they've been throwing a lot of um, um, was it called messages yes. all over social media? My heart goes out to him. But this issue of our healthcare um, practitioners, it has to be treated. What I'd like to say, in addition to that, is that we're supposed to, I would like them to set an example with these people and indict them for manslaughter. Maybe when people start facing consequences, you stop joking with people's life. Because they had a girly there and they didn't even put him on it. He was sat in a chair. Yeah. Someone that you claim you couldn't resuscitate. And then you're all arguing about, oh, yeah, carry him now, no, carry him now. Never. It's so insensitive. And whoever works in the medical field and captures on a um, phone somebody's condition, which is what they did when, um, what's, this, what's this guy, Kobe Bryant died. Mm. And the policeman had recorded it with his phone mm. and had released it, not in the right stream. And they charged him to court. And she won the case. I mean, yes. you, you took that story. Yes. So um, just imagine if we have, really, we need to have scapegoats. We have it. They should go after them. Yes, we have, we need to get these people because guess what? Even there is a patient confidentiality, yes. patient doctor confidentiality, yes. confidentiality yes. that was breached. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, there's so much that is going mm. on here. We right? make examples of Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Glory, your story mm. quickly. Um, today, my news is about um, rising prices of commodities and other things. Consumers of gas in Lagos State have expressed displeasure over the hike in the price of cooking gas. The 12.5 kg cylinder cooking gas price has risen to 12,000 naira, and many consumers have said, 
and many consumers said they, they may move back to cheap alternatives like firewood. At this point, we are quite frustrated at the rate at which the price of every commodity in the market keeps surging, a consumer told a consumer said. So that's um, what I found in the news. One of the things that caught my attention, let's say, it's generally what is still happening. So I remember then, um, before COVID, um, the price of cooking um, gas was about 3,000 thereabouts. And after a while, it rose to 5,000. Um, I remember I said last month when I bought um, this thing, so it was about 10,000. And currently, it's now 12,000. So I maybe I'll be one of the people that will go back to um, using firewood or stove no. or anything because that, I mean, that it's in so itself annoying. brings another problem. It brings so you yes, can't because, even afford um, that. You, it's just like where are we heading to? Will this stop? That's the question. Is there a point at which we're expecting that that's things how, to start? That's why we need out? to choose who our leaders, our mm -hmm. next set of leaders. I mean, leaders it's so painful for people like us that are like salary earners because at the end of the day, well, it's not a salary. Earner. I, I don't think it's a salary. I'm not sure this issue because you're everyone is. Even my child who lives abroad is complaining about increasing so, prices. It's all over the world because the price of fuel and the euro dollar effect seems to trickle down to everybody. I hardly see things reversed when it comes to prices, but I believe the value should increase. Uh, let's, let's just pray. When yes. we get the right people. Okay. Um, Lady, your story. Okay. My story will be expatiated in our today's story because it's about the obedient movement. Um, I had seen on a, a, a page on Instagram where someone was making fun of Shawari saying that he had said some negative things about Obi in the, back, in the past. And then he saw him in person and he was almost like, almost as if he was kissing us. He was, you know, playing and acting like he never had an issue with the guy. Which brings us to what I said about it. And the reason why I found it interesting is if he has come to the realization that he is not such a bad guy after all, why don't the little parties spread all across, join forces, and make themselves a formidable party. Mm -hmm. Because we know that we almost seem to run a two-party system in Nigeria, APC and PDP. But everybody that has had the aspiration of being a president with a smaller party and they know, they just don't want to admit, they know they don't have a chance. Join forces with somebody that seems as if the people are you know, rallying after. And let's see if we can all put that force together mm -hmm. and choose a candidate that seems to be speaking our language. All right, so let me quickly take, I think I have like two stories I want to quickly run mm. through. First of all, they said the Federal Executive Council had approved that MTN would take over the construction of Enugu Onitsha Expressway at over 202.8 billion naira mm. on the, uh, under the road infrastructure tax credit scheme. I, I particularly love this. Um, this was announced, um, the Minister for Works and Housing, Mabatuni Fashola, disclosed this um, to the State House correspondent shortly after the week's council meeting chaired by the President, Major Muhammadu Buhari, retired at the presidential villa. So according to Fashola, the approval followed Executive Order 7 signed by the President in January of 2019. He said would, um, this would enable the telecom giant to complete um, the dualization of the 110 kilometer road. I like mm -hmm. this story in particular because, mm -hmm. again, if you look at the environs within like, um, VI, I think there's a, there's an next stretch in Bagada that um, Dangote had done. Mm -hmm. A lot yes. of private companies, yeah. access banks, different companies, they are coming together to um, take on ins infrastructural so uh, projects, right? Mm -hmm. So um, all the government needs to do is give them tax holidays because mm -hmm. if we know now already that. It's not looking like if we are waiting and waiting on the government, mm -hmm. things might be fixed. So I like the idea of partnering with private companies. Yeah. So instead of giving them exorbitant taxes that would not even know where mm -hmm. the taxes are going, mm -hmm. let's even see that this, this is what this, this tax yeah. is yeah. being used yeah. for. So I, 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 I particularly found like, this story yeah, interesting, yeah. and mm -hmm. that's why I took it. And secondly, I wanted to quickly take another story. I think it's also linked to the conversation that we're having today of um, one of the the ex um what's his name now the ex you see these obedience people eh? <laughs> the awala is plenty <laughs> so there are reactions as the ex-general that's the hashtag answers oh. yes mm. he made the 
Peter B's list. So he's mm -hmm. amongst the 1,234 member of the Presidential Campaign Council of the mm -hmm. Labour Party mm -hmm. um, standard um, bearer Peter B. So now criticisms have trailed he, that appointment of um, his name is um, Major General John Eneche, right? He, because he had described the Lecky shooting mm -hmm. as being photoshopped, right? So, um, um, so they have, uh, what's it called? There's a lot of backlash saying that why would He's this particular person, you know, be in part of the defense team? Well, I'll speak more about this mm. when we come back from the break. But we're going to be discussing um, what's it called, the obedience movement. And we're asking, are Nigerians allowed to choose differently? Stay with us. We'll be right back.